want to go through. The concept I want to go through today is part of your mock exam that's going to be happening next week. And it's called find, oops, bigger, find, find the middle. Now, in generability so far, the question type you've seen, all of you have seen, is called find the next, right? So for example, the question would be one, two, three. What comes next is pretty straightforward. It's four. Yeah. So that's find the next type of question. Find the middle is another question type that um, has sometimes come up. Uh, it doesn't come up every year. And it, even if it does, it's very, um, like the occurrence of it is pretty low, but we want to help you prepare for it. Now, the way it would come up in the gate test might be slightly different, but the find the middle is a very um, popular um, question type in the UCAT test. Does anyone here know what the UCAT test is? No nope. idea. The UCAT test, right, is basically um, the entrance exam that you have to write before you go into medicine. Now, the company that writes the UCAT test is the same company that writes your GATE test, right, your ACER test. And that company is called ACER. Now, many years ago, the UCAT test only had find the next questions, the question types you were doing, right? But as students got better and better at solving these questions, they in, in, like included this new question type, which is called find the middle questions. And now in UCAT, most questions are find the middle. There's obviously other different question types, but this is like the easiest um, question type you'll see in UCAT. Before the easiest question type was find the next, but now the easiest question type is find the middle. Find the middle, even though the easiest question type in UCAT, it is still a very hard question type. And the way find the middle works is kind of like this. You're given a series of images, right? So I'm going to use numbers to, for you to understand like much easier. Let's just say you got, oops, four, two, five, three, one. Find the middle is when you have to rearrange this into its right order. And then you choose the middle value, which is three. Melvin, is it the median? Uh, well, yes, this is the median where you find the middle value, right? Whichever is in the middle. So in this case, it was three. I'll give you guys another example. Um, I just send me your answer in the, um, actually don't send me your answer in the chat. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand and I'll choose one person, okay? Um, here's another example, pretty straightforward, okay? Find the middle. <clears throat> Raise your hand. Okay, I'll choose Sini's iPad. Sini's iPad. Abdik. Uh, March. That's right because the order is January, February, March, April, May. So March is the middle, correct? Do you guys understand? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's how find the, that's how, yeah. the, that's how find the middle question works, okay? Now I'm going to give you a, th th that's pretty much the, like how the question works. I'm going to pause the recording now and I'm going to quickly write a, make up a question. And I want you to see if you guys can attempt it, okay? I'll give you guys, yeah. give you guys three minutes to figure out the pattern. Uh, 
Could you scroll down a bit? No, I can't scroll down, unfortunately. Okay. Actually, wait, wait, wait. I think I can. I can. I can. I'll see what I'll do. One sec. Right, there you go. Wait, oh wait, you can't. Oh, can you see now? Yes, thanks. Yes. Thank you. Mm. All right. Two more minutes left. All right, let's see. I'm gonna get rid of them. Perfect. So this question, raise your hand if you have an answer for this. So let me see. Okay. Dash. Let's go. Tell me. What do you think the answer is? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, like um how do you lower the hand? I raised the hand for lots okay. a lot of question. That's okay, that's okay. Uh, John, Tessa, I did the white heart, um, okay. at the top in the middle. Okay, um, all right. What about you, uh, Joy? What about you, Navazish? Three? Uh, I think it's uh, black is always upside down, white is always the same way, and white stays in the same position while black moves around. Okay. So let me uh, screen share my iPad and I will show it to you how it works. So share content. Oh, I have to stop screen sharing. Stop screen share. Okay. Stop screen share. Okay. All right. So, um, let me bring this question up here. Airdrop it, airdrop it. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a pain, but I'll quickly show it to you, right? The question was kind of like this. Um, we had four, one, oops, we had one, two, three, four, five, right? Five different squares. And then we had a love heart like this. Love, I'm going to use triangles instead of love hearts, okay? Uh, triangle like that, 
triangle like that, triangle like that, and triangle like that, okay? And this was green, this was green, and this was green. The other ones were empty. Now, when you do find the middle question, you have to find, you have to rearrange them, and you have to find the middle value, okay? So it has to be one, two, three, four, five, right? Like that. Now, Mm, one second, let me see if this. Actually, guys, I'm not going to do that question. I just realized maybe that question is distorted. Maybe the love hearts have moved around. Because I think I'm pretty sure it should be in the corners, not in the middle and things like that. So I'm going to do another one, similar type of question. But instead, I'm going to move these things around. So let's do this. I'm going to have a circle here, circle here, circle here, here, and a circle here. Now, these are, um, these. this is the question that we have, right? Now, this is all in a jumbled up manner. To solve it, what you have to do is you have to rearrange them and then figure out what's in the middle. So for this question, and for any fundamental question, the first step you do is you draw the map. So for here, you would have a four-sided map, right? Because it's in each corner. And then you fill it in. In the first image, it's here. Oh, oops, here. Second image, it's here. Third image, it's here. Fourth image, it's here. And the fifth image, it's here, right? Now, the reason find the middle is so hard is because we don't know where it starts, right? So we don't know how it goes. So let's, and then the next thing you to, that we don't know is what the pattern is. So when you do a find the middle question, what you do is you draw the map, right? Just like the other question. So number one is draw the map. And the second one is go to the right basically by the way this is just a rough idea right you go through the patterns from the simplest to the hardest i'll give you a set like a proper checklist for this um soon and this is just a rough idea don't worry too much about finding little questions they're not going to come up and in your mock exam i think you have four of them where we won't mark you for those we just want to give it to you so just you just get to try it out. We'll see if we mark it or not. I'll talk to the other tutors and see what they think about it as well. So you go through the simplest patterns. Now, can anyone tell me what the simplest pattern in uh, generability is? Put your hand up. What's the easiest pattern in generability? Uh, What's the easiest pattern in generability? Are you asking me? Yeah, go for it. Um, The easiest pattern is like, a, B, and then D, and then like oh, no. the, the alphabet. I meant like, you know, plus one, plus two, like that. What's the simplest pattern? Oh yeah, plus one. Yeah, so the simplest pattern is plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, right? That's the simplest pattern. Now, what I want you guys to do is look at this map and see if we can have a plus one, plus one, plus one pattern. So let's start from here. Let's just imagine the first shape was actually one. And then you go plus one, plus one, plus one each time. From one, it goes to two, and then two to five, and then five to three, and three back to one. That's not possible, right? Because we didn't hit four. So the plus one, plus one, plus one doesn't work if you start from one. What if you start from here, two? From two, you go to five, five to three, three to one, and one to four. Do you see how that makes sense? this pattern makes sense. So what that would mean is the order, when you rearrange this question, the order would be that it starts from two. This would be the first image. The second image is here. Third image 
is actually the third image. The fourth image is this, and the fifth image is this. So the Melvin? Third, yep. I didn't get the like the number part. I don't yeah. either. Yeah. It's really confusing. I okay, I'll, I'll try my best to go through it mu as much as I can today, right? As much as I can. If you don't understand it, don't worry too much about it. This is the hardest questions you'll see. I um, I'd lay, I really want to go to the math and gender ability word before the class finishes. But I do want to give you guys a rough idea of how it works. So basically what, what I do, um, I don't know who, who was the one who said that it Okay, whoever that was, right? Basically, how this works is like this. Please mute yourselves, guys, come on. Josna, Kanchi, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the first step is you draw the map, okay? So these images you see here, uh, do I have a spotlight function? These images you see here, right? These five, the, all of them, they are, um, what do you call it? They're, um, they're jumbled up. We don't know which order they are, right? Clearly the order here doesn't make sense. From here to here, plus one, and then plus two, and then plus two, and then plus one. That doesn't make any sense, right? So we have to figure out what the order is. And to do that, what you do is you draw a map. That's step one. So you draw a map. So in here, we know that in the, um, these, these patterns, they go in corners. They only move in the corners, right? In here, in here, in here, in here, in here. They only go through the corners. So you draw a four-sided map that looks like this. The first image is in this corner, so I put down one here. The second image is here, so I put down two. Third image is here, I put down three. Fourth image is here, so I put down four. And then fifth image is here, so I put down five. Now, you go through the simplest pattern. The simplest pattern is a plus one, plus one, plus one pattern. If you can find a plus one, plus one pattern in this map, if you can find it, that means that is the correct pattern. Okay, so let's start. We already figured out that, the, now we don't know where to start from. Okay, so can someone give me a random number where we should start? Adwit, where should I start? What do you think the first image in the pattern is? Pardon? Of these images, right? Which of them, Adwit, do you think is the first one? First one in the sequence. Uh, the one the to the name. very left. One to the very left. This one. So you think this is the first one, right? Yeah. So this one is number one. So we'll start from there. Let's see if it makes sense. Okay. So from one to two, that's plus one. Two to four plus one. Five to three plus one. Three to one plus one. And then, oh, sorry. One to two plus one two to five, five to three, and three back to, there's no more number here, right? So we can't do that because we haven't hit four yet. So this plus one, plus one, plus one doesn't make sense because you can't go from one to two, two to five, five to three, and then back to one because we didn't use four and you can't use one twice, okay? So we can't start with one. Try something else, Adwick. Um. The third one from the left. Here? Uh, no, oh, uh, number yeah, number five, number five. Okay, number five. So number five is this, okay? Yeah. So imagine we're starting from here. So if, if we start with number five, it goes five to three, three to one, one to two, and then two back to five. Do you see how that doesn't make any sense? Because we didn't hit number four. You want to try number three now? So three yeah. to five. Two. Five to two, two to one, and then back to three again. We didn't hit four. So three doesn't make any sense. So let's try two or four. It doesn't make a difference because they're both the same position, right? Yeah. Two to four, five to three, three to one, one to four. Do you see how that makes sense? Yes. Yeah. Well, let's try four, four to five, five to three, three to one, one to two. So the pattern is it goes 
it starts at two, let's just say or two or four, same thing. It goes, so it goes left one to one, then it goes up one to three, then it goes right one to five, then it goes down one to four. Do you see how that pattern makes sense? Yeah, but couldn't it be a mirror pattern? Because it goes plus one, plus two, plus, right, plus one, plus two. Yeah, and then it goes. Plus two, plus two, plus one, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. No. I mean, it could be. It could be plus one, and then plus two, and then plus two, and then plus one, right? But the when you go through the patterns, you go through the simplest one. There you can find so many other patterns. I'll give I'll give you another one, right? How about a plus one plus two plus three plus four one? Plus one plus two plus three plus four. See, this one makes sense. But you choose the simplest pattern. The simplest pattern is plus one plus one plus one. And if you do plus one plus one plus one, the middle one is three. So the answer to this question is three is the answer. Do you understand? Yep. You understand? Yep. Melvin. Three, what's your question? Uh, uh, so we'll put him with starting from two. Can we do it uh, the other way around? Sure, it still makes sense. Two to one, one to three, three to five, five to four. Do you see how three is still the middle? Yes. Yeah, so it still makes sense. Namazish, what's your question? Namazish. Can we still, are we still allowed to like work it out on the mock test? Of, of course you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on a piece of paper? Uh, you will not get working out paper. Oh. Okay, um, next thing I need to go through. Okay, we've done this. All right, math questions, okay? Now, here are the math questions, all the working out. I just wanna quickly change the color. I don't like the green. The green looks really annoying on the black. I'm gonna make it yellow. The yellow looks really nice. Okay. That looks so much nicer to me. Oh. Actually, orange is okay. Okay, be yellow. All right, so these are the answers to the questions, all right? Now, I got a special, will we have to bring a book to the mock exam? If you're going to, no, you will not be given any working out paper, just like the real gate test. So you won't be allowed to bring your own book as well. We will provide you paper to do your writing um, questions, but that's it. We will not be giving you extra papers to do, you know, working out. Now, um, I got a, few requests to go through and the, they were let's say, question number three and seven All right uh, what do we bring for the exam do we bring a working out paper nope tanya you're not allowed you're only allowed to bring some snacks maybe if you want to eat some snacks and uh your pencil case that's it um is production the class Prakash? Yes. Where are you, Prakash? Um, oh, you're NDS 5 yeah. All right. Prakash, was it question number three and seven in maths? Yes. Okay, no worries. Let's go through it. Oh, oops. Okay, so question number three. The paint to acetone ratio is three to one, right? So for every one part, of for every one part of acetone, you need to have three parts of paint. But in the question, we had 1.1.2 liters of paint and we needed to find out how much acetone, right? Yeah. We know that the paint is always three times bigger than the acetone or the acetone is three times smaller than the paint. Do you understand? Yeah. So to solve it, you do 1.2, which is the amount of paint and you divide that by three to find you the number of acetone. And the acetone is 400 milliliters. Do you understand? Yeah. Got it? Yeah. 
Perfect. Wait, how do you yep. get 400 milliliters? Oh, 1.2 divided by 3 is 0 0.4 liters. And there's 1,000 milliliters in one liter. So you just multiply this by 1,000 and you'll get 400 milliliters. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Now, question number seven. Melvin's a health fanatic. He works out three, eight, four times in a week and every fourth week he takes a rest. So the first three weeks that he works out, he'll work out 12 times, right? Which is four times three, which is 12. But the, during the last week, he takes a break. So he does zero workouts. So the first three weeks, 12 workouts. Last week, zero workouts. So every four weeks, he'll work out a total of 12 workouts. Do you guys understand that? Yeah. Go, all good. Everyone, all good? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. So if he works out 12 times every four weeks, every one week, he'll work out three times. Do you guys understand? That's an average. And there's 52 weeks in a year. So you do 52 times three, and that'll get you 156 workouts in one year. Do you guys understand? Pragash? Yes. Yeah. All good, Pragash? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I love this new laser pointer thing, as you can tell. It's so nice. Okay. Can you change its color? Um, good question. No, I don't think I can. All right, so let me go through the questions. Shri, you want me to go through question number six? Okay, Shri, question number six is just simple division. Basically, you find out how much they cost for each um, week. So car A, it's 476 for a week. So you do 476 divided by seven. $68 per day. Car B is $255 divided by three, and you get $85 per day. Car C is $316 divided by four, and it's $79 per day. So the most expensive one is car B, which costs $85 per day. All good, Shree? Yeah. Tanya, do question six. Melvin? Yeah? Can you slow down a bit? Oh, like me speaking? Uh, the work, Like, you know how you're speeding... With the working out, like. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no worries, I'll slow down. Melvin? Yeah. Can you do question five? Yeah, so three, um, just send it in the chat. I'll go through step by step. So that's why I went through yours first. Now, uh, Navazish, send me one question at a time. Uh, so I'll go through question number two first, okay? Wait, Navazish, um, yeah, question number three. Uh, wait. Question number two. Okay, so there was four items. There was a cherry, there was the Tim Tams, the cheese sticks, and the muffins. There was eight cherries, six Tim Tams, 20 cheese sticks, and three muffins. Josh ate half of each, right? So he ate four cherries, so he's left with that much. He ate three Tim Tams, that's left with three. And cheese sticks, he ate 10 of them, and now you're left with 10, and he didn't touch the muffins, okay? So now you're left with four cheesesteaks and 10 cherries. Sorry, four cherries and 10 cheesesteaks. So the meal ratio is four to 10, which is two to five. Do you guys understand? That's how we do question number two. Okay. Um, question number five. Okay. So uh, question number five and question number eight i've i've got a simpler version for you guys that makes it a bit easier if you want to understand it a bit easier as well so there's three flavors of cookies right chalk chip plain and chocolate okay it is four to five to six okay and basically the easiest way to find out is that he we know that he doesn't eat anything that's not chocolate in it. So he's not going to be eating chocolate. He, he will be eating chocolate chip. He will be eating chocolate. So there's plain leftover. So you find out what percentage of the total cookies is plain. The total percentage is five over four chocolate chips plus five plain plus six chocolate. 
and that percentage is 33.3 percentage. Do you understand where I got that number from? No. No. Okay. So, in this ratio, the total number of cookies you could get is 13, sorry, 15 cookies, right? Which is four plus five plus six. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. So the percentage of a plain cookie will be five out of 15. Because in 15 cookies, five of them will be plain. So the percentage of plain will be five out of 15. Do you guys understand that? Yes. Yeah. But how do you calculate it? Yeah. Five out of 15 is the same as one third. Do you guys understand that? I think. Yes. Yeah. Do you guys understand five out of 13 is one third? Now, to, con to convert, to convert fractions into decimals, all you do is you take the top number, which is one, and you divide it by the bottom number, one divided by three. Or in this case, you could do five divided by 15. Five divided by 15. And that'll give you the decimal answer, which is three, 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 and on and on and on it goes, right? And then to convert a decimal into a percentage, what do you do? Multiply by 100. So you could do 0 0.33 of 100, and you get 33%. Do you understand that? Yep. Okay. Thanks. Now, you don't need to convert it to a percentage. You can just leave it as a decimal. Because when you multiply, you multiply with a decimal. Actually, you know what? I'll change that for you guys. Make it easier, less confusing. Melvin? Yeah? Henry told us a different way. Yes, he did. So that, that's what I said at the start, Garrick. Um, we went through a different method in class. I just want to show an easier, uh, sorry, not an easier, just another version as well. So, you know, in case some, because I think that a lot of people have different versions of their life. And I want to give you guys both versions today, just so that whichever one you like better, you can use it. Um, usually I don't give you multiple ways because some ways are better than others. In this question, the way we taught you in class on Saturday and the way I'm teaching you right now, pretty much the same level of difficulty or like time consumption, right? So it's up to you. If you guys like this method better, keep it. Or if you like the method that we went through in class, you can do that. The way you said in class looked way easier than this. Yeah, so that's, a, that, that's, uh, that's if that's easier for you, right? Go with that. Do you know what I mean? I'm just showing you different version. So you'll get zero. Melvin. Yeah. Um, I had Henry. Um, he thought that it said that like not the chalk chips one, only the chocolate flavored ones. So that equal to uh, 180 cookies. Oh, uh, okay. So um, yeah, it could be chalk chip and chalk chip. Chalk chip has chalk in it, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It should be chalk chip and chalk chip. Is somebody screaming? So you do 300 times 0 0.33. One sec, I think I will mute everyone. Um, okay. So 300 times 0 0.33, and that'll give you 100 cookies. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, next question. Hello? Let me see next question. Question number 10. Oh, 10 is a massive question. Okay. So. This takes a lot of like, a lo lot of different steps. Step one is you write down the um, relationship of each of them, right? How much cookies they get. A 
what's uh, what's a called again? Anishka. Anishka gets the total number of that bill gets plus fifty one more. Correct. So you write down a is b plus fifty one. Bill gets twice as much as Tim. So b is two times t, and Tim gets one fifth of Anishka. So t is equal to a divided by five. Do you guys understand that? Yes. Okay. Then the question says, give it in a ratio of Anushka, Bill, and Tim. So when you write it out, it'll be Anushka is Bill plus 51, Bill is two times Tim, and Tim is A divided by five. Now, when you see this ratio here, right? When you see this ratio here, is this useful? Like, can you do anything with that ratio there? No. 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 Because this is a different value to this, to this, right? B, T, and A are all different variables. So you can't compare them. So what you do is you sub in values. Sub in values is substitute in values. If A is equal to B plus one, then I can get rid of this A and put B plus one. Do you guys understand that? And if T yes. Is equal, and if t is equal to a divided by 15, I can remove this t and put a divided by 15. Do you guys understand that? Yeah. And if yes. b, sorry, and if b is equal to 2 multiplied by a t, I can get rid of this b and put 2 multiplied by t. Do you guys understand that? Excuse me, Malcolm. Yes. Yeah. What, does, what, does, what does sub mean? Substitute in the values. Substitute. Substitute. So since what it means is that since this is equal to this, I can get rid of a and put this in instead for a, right? It's like um, you know, like since me, Henry, and Jenny are all the same teachers, right? One of us can replace the other person. It's still the same. Do you understand? So that's why. Um, so similarly, a is equal to B plus 51. So I can get rid of this A and put B plus 51. So when you substitute on those values, I'll just say A just remains B plus 51. B is equal to, sorry, T is equal to B plus 51 divided by five. Okay? B plus 51 divided by five because T is A divided by 15. Do you guys understand that? Yes. And then, um b is 2 times t and t is b plus 51 divided by 5 so b is 2 times b plus 51 divided by 5 does everyone understand that isn't it b plus 51 over 5 yeah over 5 and divided by 5 same thing right so one over two is the same as one divided by two. I'll give you a good example, good question. Eight over two is the same as eight divided by two, which is four. Okay, so do, does everyone understand this part here when you sub in the values? Because that's the yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Now you write, rewrite the equate, rewrite the, the the you rewrite the ratio. So now we have a is b plus fifty one, b is two times b plus fifty one divided by five, and t is b plus fifty one divided by five. Does everyone understand? Yeah. Okay. Now here is the um, confusing part. I know the whole thing's confusing, but this is the more confusing part. This is where it gets a bit more confusing. Since all of these have a B plus 51 in it, we can get rid of B plus 51 from all of them by dividing all of them by B plus 51. So here's my question. I'm gonna choose Tanya. Okay, Tanya, can you unmute? Tanya? Ahmed, can you unmute? Can you hear me? Me? Yeah, Ahmed, yeah? Yeah. Okay, Ahmed, here's a question for you, right? What's two divided by two? One. Four divided by four? One. 10 divided by 10? One. 
100 divided by 100. 1. 10 billion divided by 10 billion. 1. 5 trillion divided by 5 trillion. 1. Do you see a pattern? Yes. Okay. So what's B plus 51 divided by B plus 51 then, Ahmed? 1. Good. So A becomes 1. Do you understand? Yes. Now here, B plus 51, if I divide that by B plus 51, what does it become, Ahmed? One. Perfect. So I have the one here. Do you guys see that? Yeah. yeah. Do you understand? So that's why it becomes two multiplied by one divided by five. Two multiplied mm -hmm. by one divided by five. That, which is two over five. And then what's B plus 51 divided by B plus 51? One. And that, that's why T becomes one over five. Does everyone understand that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And now it becomes one to the power of two, two over five to one over five. Now in ratios, you can't have fractions. It has to be whole numbers. So you multiply the whole thing by five. And A, one times five becomes five. Two over five times five becomes two. And one over five times five becomes one. So the ratio is five, two, and one. Do you guys In Kate, will they give um, answers? <clears throat> no, they will not give answers. To choose from. Yes, they will give answers to choose from. You'll have multiple choice, except for writing. Okay. okay. Next question. We don't bring our note-taking books or gate booklet for this week's class, right? So the next week's class, guys, next week's class, bring your gate booklet because we're going to be collecting all your marks, right? So while you're doing the test, we'll be collecting your marks and doing other things for you. I'll show you what we're going to do. Um, question five by Josna. Tanya, can you please zoom out so I can take a picture of the work? Yep, I'll send all the things to question 10. Yeah, just done that. Can you scroll down a bit? When you do question number 16, can you slow down? Yep, sorry about that. Okay, Elazish, I'll go through the next few questions from you as well. So I'll go through a few of the generability questions really quickly. But before I do that, <clears throat> I want to show you guys what we're going to be doing, like what myself and the other tutors are going to be doing 